for the last couple of months, things have been tough with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we didn't mm -hmm. know. Because when we see you, you're laughing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you were in a bit of a slump. Yes. What do, you, what do you call that slump? Mo mo most definitely. And of course, most people would say hey, it's, the, it's the kind of year for that kind of experience where you're in a slump because of what's happening in the space, you know, particularly for my industry, entertainment, you know. It has been rough for us because we couldn't do what we are accustomed to doing. I mean, I mean, no live events in the way, you know. I remember a friend of mine telling me that I have to adapt to what's happening. I'm saying it's difficult to perform for an audience that's not there, mm -hmm. you know, because we need the feedback, you know. So it has, it, that has been rough, obvious, of course, because in my family, I'm the main person who, you know, bring in the bread to take care of, you know, everything. So that's been a challenge for me, you know, in, in the way that is concerned specifically. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I went into a real deep slump. And the thing about it, for our experience, especially if we're in show business, it usually try to mask some things to try to project only the good side when you're really struggling, you know, you're struggling with, with depression. The first time I met depression was this year. I, I you know, wow. because, you know, I, I, I have been uh, afflicted physically. So we're used to the physical elements and things. But to deal with the idea of a, a mental uh, depression for me was, you know, was tough for me. And it was the first time my family was seeing me like that too. Mm -hmm. My daughter said to me one time, Daddy, this is not you, this is not you, you know. So it was, it was, it was really a, a slump for me in this season. You coming out of it now? Yes, I am coming out of it. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. How did I know? Yes, <laughs> I'm coming. coming out of it. I mean, if, if you had called me a couple of months ago, I, I couldn't, I couldn't sit here. I said, no, no, no. I think I, I think I probably said as much to you that, no, I'm going through a season. I I'm, know. Not, I'm not ready to, to talk. Yeah. You know, so I give thanks for me and for a number of persons watching. December is the month like you are wondering if you are really here because a couple of months ago, several months ago, you are wondering if December was even possible. So well, that is here. the fact that we are here yeah. just to sit here. Well, you are, you are not alien to challenges. You speak, speak about it in the mental realm now, but you grew up in challenging circumstances. You're the last of eight? Last of eight. Eight Last of children, eight, yes. but the first to pass common entrance, the first, to, first pass to get degree, entrance, first, first to travel to foreign. First to travel. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what you say, yeah. you know, uh, as the last child and the child of firsts, mm -hmm. which is a paradox, interestingly. Mm, yeah, because eight is the is, is new beginning. You know, right. In, in, in the scriptures, they tell you about seven is completion and eight is the new beginning. And I, it took a while for me to recognize that I'm the eighth. I am number eight. Mm -hmm. A book I'm reading by John Gray. I am number eight, yes. No, it was well, tough because remember, think about this one. If you're in the garrison, the community, the inner city, and you're a mother who is a single mother, you know, I'm sure her mother, my mother, would have told her after the first couple of children, listen, now I have no more cars. You know what I mean? So perhaps after the first two or three children, you'll say, hey, that's it. She went four, five, six. I mean, she could have stopped, you know, at six, you know. Even seven, where she never got eight. <laughs> I'm so glad she did, though. Oh we are God. all so glad she did. Yes. Um, but I think the one regret, or one of the regrets you have, is that she didn't. She wasn't here when you made it. Yeah, she wasn't. She wasn't here at all, and it's tough for me because I remember we live at Twenty Third Street in Trenchstone, right? And up the top of the road was a shop. That's where I went to watch TV because we didn't own a TV. We, we were, you know, in in the inner city. There is poor and poorer. You know, there are some people, you might find a one car. Like when I go down there now, I see several cars, and I say, hmm, very different mm. from when I, when I was growing up. So we watch TV down at the end of the road, and of course, um, when it's time to go home, the owner say, yes, you have to lock my door now. <laughs> Come on. So I have to go back down and think, you know. So, so it, it was tough growing up, and my mother, she sold her ways at the, the corner, Hayward Street and Orange Street. You know, I talk about comb and brush and, and rag and those things. You know, so it, it wasn't a, a, a living that we were happy about. Many nights we got to sleep, no food. You know what I mean? And, you know, it was tough for me growing up. And the thing is, I don't know how I was able to, to survive and to, to learn in that environment, to learn to read in that environment, because there was no father present in that environment for me. I, 
I had one of those typical situations where I discovered that um, this man in the house is my stepfather. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so that was, that was a lot of time for me. And so. you told me that you are the father you are to your girls because you didn't want to fail your girls in the way your father failed you. Yes, um, yes. So that has had a profound impact on you as a father. But there's also yes. something else that has a profound impact on you as a father. Yes, that yes. a lot of people do not know. Right, right. Because, I mean, I cannot talk about father without talking about all my experiences mm -hmm. as a father. You know, and some of those experiences I have not talked often about mm -hmm. because of, there are those experiences that you, they are regrettable, you know. And the truth is, for me as a father, family is very important to me. Family is so important to me. I mean, my family and I are very, very close. So when I think about my experience as a father and the importance of family, you know, I, I have to remember that there is regrettable an experience that I had. Because I love my children, but I don't have all my children. There's, a, there's an exchange child that is not with us, you know. You have a he son. lives abroad, mm -hmm. you know, and um, that's a tough thing for me now when I reflect. No, when I see my daughters who are now, I mean, adults, late, I mean, 19 year old and a 24 year old. I'm saying, when I look at the, the broad picture and I hear often that, boy, you know, you have to have a good relationship. I, I remember that there, there's a child that that relationship is not so. And it's tough, it's painful because mm -hmm. the truth is, I haven't shared that uh, as much anywhere with anybody. They, they, they probably would only think that, you know, my daughters. But I mean, trust me, my phone bears a lot of evidence of of trying to restore, trying to reconcile a, a, a relationship that is important, is valuable. You see, um, I know that there are men or, or women who have similar experiences, but let me tell you something, if, if you value the connection and recognize the, 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 that important blood connection between child and parent and parent and child, you cannot, cannot, cannot live a mm -hmm. life in the absence of any kind of connection with that child. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it is, it's not possible. You know, you go, you're going to want to reach out and to restore. And I have failed. I recognize that as a man, even before I now live in a life where I seek the counsel of God every single day, even before you now I know and regret some experiences I've had in the past before I knew God. And I thank him that now I know him, he's guiding me, he's telling me that what has happened in the past is the past. Because the truth yeah. is that you, you cannot alter the past, can't change but it. you can bring the past to the altar of God. Let me say that again. You cannot alter the past, but you can bring the past to the altar of God. That's what I'm doing every day, mm -hmm. and just praying fervently that he does the restoration and thing because it is easily um, the most painful story of my life. I am a different man because of whose I am in Christ. And I trust him every single day. I have prayed about any issue, even the issue I've mentioned. And I have to trust him that he will do it in his time. time. Because he has already begun just yesterday. And that's for another story. Mm -hmm. he has already, when, I, I, when I saw what he did yesterday, I run round my house, ask me pitting them, run round my house, you know, because I was thankful and glorifying him. You know, I have said, and they have said it, and uh, uh, you know, a man, God without man is still God. But I discovered that man without God is nothing, we are vapor. And when every man discovered that, they discovered the change. Because a personal relationship, I can't truly explain to you. I have to just tell you that when you accept Christ Jesus, you are a different man. Guarantee you're a different man. That's the best you have to have a Christmas gift. That is the gift, the gift, the eternal, because it brings a peace that is, is unexplainable, mm -hmm. inexpressible. It, it surpasses human understanding. And when you're done, I'm going to your valley and I go to him and I say, Lord, what is this you take me to? Because you told me that you will never leave me nor forsake me. So this slump that I'm in, Lord, rescue me, Lord. And you go to him fervently and say, rescue me, Lord. Wait. Be expectant. Because I am sitting on this couch now because of that. Mm -hmm. Because if you call me two months ago, you would want to see me. See me when I tell you that and I wouldn't come. But he says, I will be with you even to the end of the age. And that's 
how I am happy that he rescued me. He thought that I was worth saving. So he sacrificed him life for I to look a black boy from Trenchstone and bless me and give him grace and care me too. And I'm going, I'm trusting, I'm going to a place where I've never gone. He's taking me to an experience that is going to be the best ever. My better days are ahead of me. I believe that and I receive that, that, that the kind of triumph that is coming is through him. And I tell anybody that watch and listen that if you choose him, remember your card and say, IT. Well, be anxious for nothing, sir. But true and prayer we and supplication, for more, yes. right? Make a request you put it out there tonight, and we know yes, you don't. Yes. the desire of your heart yes. will be fulfilled. I receive it. Okay? I receive and you're going to tell me about it when it I happens. I receive it when it happens. I shall right, call you. So. All right. Bless you for being here. Thank you. Time and bless you. Fast, though. Yes, ma'am. Bless you and what you are doing. And God is using you to champion uh, some new hope in different people all over the world. And he has chosen you for this time, for this season. And I'm praying that he's going to keep you when you step into the 52-week season where we are here yeah. every single week. Because there are so many persons out there with so many stories I want to share. I want to share triumph. And he has chosen you. You are a selected daughter of the Most High God. Bless you, Archie. Know that. Bless Simone you. Clark Cooper. Thank you. Ari Mami. Ari Mami. <laughs> That's me. All right. Let's do this. Affirmation. Thank you, IT. Mm -hmm. uh, here's how we come out today. So, Jamaicans have a, a saying Tech kin teeth keep my heart bun. There's also another generic universal saying that says that we must always be kind because the truth is that we think we know looking on who and how people are when in truth some of us who look like we have it most together have either gone through or are still going through a world of hurt but we don't have to live there in that place we can make an attempt to change that address the one thing we must always try to remember, even as we go through our challenges, is that feelings are not facts, and they're also temporary, they don't last. Today's challenges are tomorrow's triumphs, and even the very building blocks on which our future can be built. So in the meantime, we look for the nuggets, and the knowledge, and the wisdom that can be gained, because indeed, there is significant value in the valley. Tonight we are affirming, I will learn from what I have lived and leverage those lessons towards a life of love.